Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Just Plain Living. I'm John Gray. It's springtime and I love it. I love it too. What a beautiful... Oh, I'm Peggy Burton. And I'm Jim Fuller. Good glad morning. We, I'm glad we got that out of the way while we uh, still can remember who we are. Uh, right. You know, we have to do that early. We so. have to do that early. It has been a beautiful week. Rain. We're going to have a lot of rain this week, but it's still springtime and you don't and have to worry about... it. grow. It's just beautiful. Be mowing grass and the onions will be stinking uh, here before long. I that, love that. That little yellow that stuff too. that's Excellent. on everything that's causing everything to sneeze. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's... it's <laughs> It's out there. If you're it's one of the bad. name on my yeah, car. If, yeah, if you're one of those who likes to keep your vehicle clean, it ain't, I know, it it ain't happening. It ain't happening. Oh, it's real easy. All you have to do is watch Tennessee Traveler on Monday night and get a wash spot coupon. That's a good plan. What time That's is that? That's a very good plan. It comes on at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. So if people watch Tennessee Traveler, they can get they can a buy Supreme. They get a Supreme Clean, a $12 Supreme Clean, the best one they have out there for 5 bucks. And they get some great meals. 5 bucks, you know. I mean, who, who, can, uh, who can not... I'll wash your car when I you can go get that get, done for $5. I don't get yeah, this Yeah, it almost cost you that. You all you got to do is call yeah, in. You, all you got to do, listen, if you don't get this, all you got to do is go on Facebook to Tennessee Traveler, our page, and oh, you can okay. buy off of that. Or we have a we have a live stream there where you can hit the button and watch it just like you're watching it on television. Same time we do it. Same time? Okay. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why I'm not up Yeah, shoot. You got to get technical. Well, I heard John, a guy. John has hired this young lady to help him. <laughs> she, and, uh, not only Don't does, tell him the not, truth, not Jimmy. Only, not only does she look good, but she's pretty high tech. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, she's carried nice. us. Yeah, she's, she's carried us into the current. Uh, into the uh, new generation. The new generation. She's, a, she's a marketing person for yes. a, a, a rural tech company. Good. And they they bring internet service. To places that can't get it and through so you have, uh, through a H, through uh, 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 what is it? Uh, wireless wireless, wireless yeah. internet in out in the counties mm -hmm. and a startup company doing real well. Of course, Good. she's she's a bright lady, very bright young lady. Well, I'm glad you have her. Yeah, yeah. Plus, she's redheaded. One day, the next day, she's red and orange headed. <laughs> she's uh, she stays in there. But I, you know, I heard a thing this morning on the Today Show, and there was a, a couple there, a business couple, older business couple, and evidently quite successful because Matt was asking them about how how once you get a job, you keep a job, and the man's main thing was is you continue to educate yourself. I don't care how good you are at what you do. Technology and society is moving ahead. faster than yeah, you are. That's true. And the person that keeps their job and stays happy in their job is the person who continues to reinvent themselves through education uh, and keeping up with the technology instead of backing away from it. Right. And I'm bad to back and, and, away from it. Yeah, I, and I was thinking about us this morning for some reason or other. It I'm has glad to do, somebody is. It has to do uh, with, I guess, the taxes situation and stuff. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I started out in the accounting field back when he wrote all this stuff down on ledgers. I know, think about that. <laughs> you know, and now certainly all of that has changed. And, and you, you know, just it's type out, it in. And, and, and I'm thinking, you know, I still know how to do the fundamentals that you write out on paper, but I have to rely on my partner, who's younger than I am, <laughs> to do all the technical to, parts. To keep me enlightened yeah. on the technical aspects oh, of, sure. of how the software works just to do what I need to do. But I'm and used to, John and I have always multitasked. We've had numerous jobs at the same time. Right. And, you know, and that's tough to do now because they're te it's technical. And they, you know, there's you know, three-year-olds out there that can help you <laughs> yeah, out. Absolutely. Well, and just, absolutely. Uh, just as simple as, as last week, you know, we had our, announced our boy state candidates. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm a person, I like paper. I still like paper. I, uh, if, if it's on my computer, I make a paper copy of it and put it in a file because I think, you know, that computer's going to disappear one day. That's tomorrow, if something might be wrong with it. You know, it might be back the next day, but tomorrow it's not going to do me any good. And if I need that piece of paper tomorrow, I want it in a file where I can go get it. Well, and you're use probably it. smart to do that. You know, and so they used to send cards and information for Boys State to where you knew what you had to do. Yeah. You gave the cards to the boys. They had to get them signed by the principal. This thing, that thing, notarization and all that. Well, now all that's online and I'm lost. Well, like when my computer But these crashed, boys aren't lost. No. I have to write a new history. <laughs> this is gone. A new history? <laughs> well, like if I that if might my not be bad. crashes and everything's gone, but I'm not going to dwell on it. I can start over any day of the week. That's right. That's right. 
It probably it, it, the computers in general probably do much better than we think. It's just that if you happen to need it right now, mm -hmm. and it's not there, it's, it's not there. It, it's it's kind of frustrating. It, it's yeah. extremely frustrating. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. very much so. Yes. We got the dog of the week coming on. Dog today. of the week's here. I know there's somebody out there that needs and wants a good black dog. <laughs> well, there one is sitting right over there. <laughs> Sure he is. And, you know, we've got all kinds of neat things happening today. Um, my friend Charlie Allen, you know Charlie. I know Charlie. The Crazy man. Charlie. Crazy <laughs> Charlie called me songs? up called me up the other day and said, I've got a friend coming from Maine. And Charlie was in Florida, and this guy's in Maine. And he wants to be on your TV show. And I went, well, how in the world did he find out about our TV show? So, well, I told him. And I said, well, what does he do? Well, he is... His name is Nick Tokeman. He's going to be with us Good. today, and he is one of the stars of The Deadliest Catch, which is That's a cute. reality show about, Maine. about no, it's out of Alaska, about oh. crab fishing oh, yeah, I've seen in that. Alaska. And he's, he's, his uh, show name is Sunshine. And uh, and he's going to be he's going to be here with us today, That's which is crazy. We have the God love Charlie police with us today. Yeah, and he's he looking good has too. To say. Chief's Chief's lost a little lost a bunch of weight. He's been out camping and hiking. That's and awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're a little bit concerned about uh, Paul uh, Blackwell, who's the chief. Paul just turned forty a couple of months ago, and and now he's on this. He's he's got him a new sports car, and he's losing forty. All, what's that? And he's and he's he's losing yeah. all his weight. That's all this great. Kind of stuff. So That's you know, great. we're not sure about. Yeah, if you see if you goes. see the chief in a new Trans Am, you'll know. Yeah, that's right. That, or yeah, Corvette. He's Corvette. He likes Corvette with a chief's chief symbol on the side of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd what be pretty good. Roscoe cool. P. Cole train? <laughs> that's what, exactly, exactly what I was thinking. And I think it'd be pretty cool to tell him a police chief had, had, had a police, that his car, official vehicle was a Corvette. That'd, that'd be I cool. Think it'd be yeah. great. That'd be cool. I, I bet Stan would. McNabb would think that's cool, too. Yes, he, he would. would. <laughs> he would. You, you and can I'm, get one for free, just and put I'm, his name on the side. And I'm quite sure the tax, I started to say, if we have to buy it, I'm sure the taxpayers won't mind. The, the, the chief oh, has a, no. Has a, has a, has a, <laughs> As long as he gives rides on Saturday, <laughs> right? Ride you know, with the chief of yeah, police heard, every heard, Saturday from 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 eight to noon. <laughs> yes, but only get a ticket. Uh, man, but there's one stipulation of that. Once he gets this Corvette, is that uh, uh, only the young ladies under thirty get to ride with the chief? So now wait. His wife <laughs> might have something to say about that. You think Lamar <laughs> might have something to say? Well, Lamar won't like that she at all. She won't like that. Okay. Listen, I don't know. Cutie I don't know. She yeah. doesn't need to be looking at that. That's right. That's right. She's probably she's probably got that all waxed up anyway. It, it, she's got to control of him. She don't worry about him. She's got him. Uh, that's right. That's right. She's got those, him. Those are things that people that are confident never worry about. Never That's worry exactly about. Right. That's heaven's no, heaven's no. So what you guys are saying is that Paul uh, is a lucky man. Right? Yes, he very is. lucky. And, he needs and, to and so is very she. Lucky. Okay, I think he'd probably <laughs> yeah. agree. I think he'd probably agree with that. Well, well the thing, the thing about Lenore, now. <laughs> maybe the thing about Lenore that I like is she, she is very, very involved in the community yes, in a whole is. lot of ways and does a lot of good things on her own. And, and stands as a as a woman on her own uh, in very good stature. Yes, absolutely. Have y'all thought here. of a name for the swimming pool? Or the new I, complex yeah, over here? I have. I think that's such a cool idea to let is, people yeah, uh, come up with an idea for the name. I've it been is. I've been uh, thinking about it. Have, what have you? No, don't tell it. You might. Don't tell it. Yeah, if you tell it, somebody, somebody else, else will get. It. No, yeah. they never <laughs> use the one I picked right now. Uh, what have you had? I, I what think it got? needs to be called the Waterworks. Well, that could do. I mean, you know, that's what a lot of times back years ago they would call I thought about the water system. I you thought know, about the, uh, splash water for work. cash. Splash for cash. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we need cash in the <laughs> town. You mean so you pay your cash and you get the splash? You get the splash. There you go. <laughs> that's a horrible name, Peggy. I don't I know, like that. I know, I know, but it, <laughs> I don't know what you know. I don't know what it'll end up being, but the, I think it's cool to have a contest about too. it. Yeah, and it I is think, too. And I think there's I don't, a lot of creative you, people it, out it there. It can't be named after somebody. I, I understand. No, I wouldn't it. think so. I think that Winston Brooks told us that last time he yeah. was on the show. So you have to be, be careful about that because yeah. there's so many people that are 
you know, that you'd like to honor. Yeah. And you just can't honor everybody. And so I, th I think it's good that they don't put a name yeah, on it. Unless right. there's somebody that wants to donate about $200,000. Yeah, if somebody wants, to buy, it, somebody wants yeah. to buy it, somebody wants to buy it, let them buy it. That's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> that that yeah. always works. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of times when, when stuff is done like that, just like it used to be the Joel Farrell pool. Right. Because if it wasn't for Joel Farrell, there wouldn't have been a pool. Well, there wouldn't have been right. a pool. So, I mean, exactly. it's, it's very different than a lot exactly. of things are now. Exactly. Um, I was impressed this weekend and enjoyed thoroughly watching the Masters. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a young good. man named Jordan Spieth who is 21 years old who and won it. Right on top he's of played it. three yeah. tournaments, four tournaments this year. He's won two of them, one being the Masters, came in second in the other two at 21, 21. years old. And last year he was in a playoff to win it at 20. Mm-hmm. This kid is phenomenal. He is. What a career. He's, he's got, got nerves of steel. You know, the, 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 if anybody out there is a golfer, and, and that golf course is notorious for having the fastest, the most difficult greens in the world anywhere. And it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the putts that he made weren't sort of in. Every one of them was right in the center of the hole. I mean, right in the center of the hole. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. That's great. And he's the first one in 40 years to win, to lead all four days. He shot right? under par all four days and led the tournament all four days. Can you imagine shooting under par on the oh, course? Right. Of course, a lot of them do. Know. Well, he got, he got it up to 19 at one point, yeah. which is the most under that anyone's ever been. That's amazing. He, yeah. he had, I think, what, 26 or 27 birdies, Yeah. which is more than anybody would ever had at 21 years old. Yeah. yeah. What a future this young man has. He was on Very, uh, some show this morning, and they were, he was talking about uh, when he was 16, he played in some tournaments with pros. You know, they were asking him when he felt like he had was going to get into that for a career, and he, he he said that he thought his game was good enough at 16 that he could com that's amazing, he could compete yeah. with some of the pros, and that's when he made his decision Where is he that from? he thought. Texas. Texas, Texas, yeah. From Texas. Yeah. Texas and, well, he won two. Tournament. He won two amateur championships before he turned pro. Yeah. You know, so what a, what a player. And yeah, uh, there's great. the future of golf right there. Yeah, yeah it is. So, so Tiger so, Woods can take a back seat, huh? Well, Tiger had, Tiger. He has, did good, too. He did well. Yeah. I mean, Tiger's almost 40 years old, and you can't swing at a ball that hard besides, for that many that, years without doing something oh, to you. Yeah, absolutely. And besides that, Tiger's done well financially. Oh, yeah. So, yeah no, He's okay. And will, oh, will, and will for a long time. Sure he will. Yeah, sure he so. will. And he gave his ex-wife Half of it. Half of it, yeah. Gave her <laughs> gave her ten billion dollars. <laughs> she deserved it. You know. I mean yeah, she probably did. She probably did. And we deserve to get out of here and show you this quick commercial break and we'll be back with the rest of the, today's show. Don't you go away, it's gonna be fun. We don't want you to miss a thing. Bye. <laughs> We are Goody Two Scoops. I love Goody Two Scoops. A family-friendly, yummy dessert specialty shop in Tullahoma, Tennessee. We excel in self-serve frozen treats and our own incredibly tasty chef-baked creations. For frozen treat lovers, we offer frozen yogurt, ice cream custard, as well as gelato and Italian ice. 85 flavors that rotate each day. 55 toppings including fresh sliced fruit. For our baked good lovers, Goody Two Scoops offers a variety of fresh pastries at a hometown price. Our two certified culinary chefs design and create incredible cakes. We showcase our cakes, froyo cakes, cupcakes, cookies, pies, and chocolate covered strawberries offered fresh daily. I love funny. <laughs> Goody two scoops. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it.
Get your news first, fast, and free with your newsletter on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with Newsleader on Channel 6, your local information network. Welcome back. We have a dog with us today. He brought with him Kevin Whipple. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, buddy. How you doing? This is Buddy. How long have you had him? Uh, we've had him for, I'm wanting to say about a year now. About we've had him for a while. And so. he was a stray when you found him. Yeah, he, he just showed up at the shelter, if I can remember oh, really? right. really? Yeah, we get some. They'll just come on up to the shelter. They'll be running around. I guess they hear the other dogs barking. Yeah, and they that's show probably up. what it is. I think so, yep. Can you tell the difference in a bunch of dogs barking and coyotes? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you can. Uh, coyotes have more of a yipping kind yeah. of noise where dogs have a have bark. Of course, for know? the longest time I thought I had a, a million dogs in my neighborhood because I live out in the country. Then I decided they must be coyotes. Yeah, the, yeah. There's All a, right, let's talk difference. about Buddy. He needs somebody to take him home. He does. He's, he's a, a male. Obviously. Yeah, he's, he's a male. He's a great lap dog. Um, he does, he would probably do better in an environment where he's the only dog. Yeah. Um, he don't really like to, he don't really get along with a lot of other bigger dogs. He's probably been abused a bit. Something by, I, I maybe, couldn't maybe by bigger dogs it, because he's had to fight for himself being thrown out. It's it's possible. And mm -hmm. that's uh, he's fighting for his territory. And is it true that dogs will like claim a spot in the house or claim a place to sleep or so, yeah some do, do. do that? yeah some do yeah. others just they don't care they can sleep wherever and then you get some that they have their one pillow or their one cushion and, and i theirs. know you have to put flea medicine and tick medicine do y'all do that once a month oh uh, yeah we try to there's different kinds of medicines you can use for it um you can get pills for it you can give them a pill once a month and it'll kill them you can get some of those from the vet's offices yeah and so yeah so, we so like you keep the ones that are there in the shelter you keep them flea and tick medicine yeah we, we do our best to yeah. keep them uh, so they're ready to go when somebody wants to pick them up mm -hmm. so if, it, if somebody wants buddy you just call that number and tell them hold buddy for you because he'll be ready and willing to go home to a good home. He needs a good home. Yep, and, he, and with a $35 adoption fee, he'll get a free neuter. That's wonderful. So, yep. And it's spring, and I guess you can let your dogs out now? Yeah, you a can. Bit. Yep. It, but what's the leash law in telehome? The leash law is that a, an animal, or like a dog, can stay on its own property. It don't have to be on a leash as long as it's on, as its, own it's, property. on its own property. But as soon as it goes out of its own property, it's in violation of the leash law. It has to be on a leash if it's off of its own property. Okay. And that's so you can let your dog run around, but it's got to be able to does stay on its own property. Fan, I mean, electric wire through the yard. Does that work pretty good? It, so I've there's different things. Sometimes it does. Others they just go right through it and don't don't care. And I it's think just, it seems to me like it'd be hard to keep a dog in, but I guess they can. I mean, in their territory. But I guess they can be trained. Yeah, some are trained. Some are really good about it, and others and just refuse to, to stay in the fence yeah. or whatever you got put up. Some just refuse, and others they don't. They'll just stay up on the porch so all day. So what happens if y'all find dogs off the leash? out and about well uh, usually we like to try to return them to the owners yeah. uh, if we can before we impound them into the shelter um, but if we can't get a hold of the owner we don't know where they're at we go ahead and we impound them and then we hold the hold them for seven days okay. and after a seven day period they're available for adoption because so. I, I noticed uh, there's a dog missing a poodle that gone got missing and mm -hmm. I don't know if any Anybody has called in or not, but I have the information. People wants to call me if they see this white poodle out running around. And people that have lost a beloved animal are very sad. I think it's important. Do you suggest dogs get bathed? Yeah, I mean, it just kind of, there's, you can get uh, different kinds of shampoos for like fleas and ticks as well. Yeah. That kind of thing. But if they're, you know, getting kind of 
smelly, yeah. then yeah, they, yeah, it probably wouldn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Soap them down and spray them Soap down. Have y'all got any big fundraisers coming up? Uh, no, we just had our uh, rabies clinic this past Saturday, and we did very well with good. it. And we got four adoptions out that day. Wonderful. So we did we did good. Well, it was successful. I, I encourage everybody to think about the animals that are looking for a home, and they bring a lot of joy to your life. They do. They are good companions. They're good guard dogs. They'll bark if somebody comes around. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this dog, I believe, would be a great companion for young or old. Oh, yeah, definitely. He, he'd be good. He's quiet and peaceful. And what do you think? About four years old? He's about four years. Mm -hmm. Well, buddy, I think you're a pretty dog. You're awful sweet. He's not smiling. <laughs> <laughs> And you think what is he? You think he's a he's a terrier mix of some sort. We're not sure really what we're sure what now, kind. I thought he was black, but he's kind of a brindle color. Yeah, he's a dark right, brindle. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you can you can see the other parts in him. Well, I encourage you to go down to the shelter if you have a certain kind of dog in mind. Just go down there and take a look. No, oh, we got plenty, all got shapes and sizes. Big ones, so. little ones, fat ones, skinny ones. Yep. Kevin, I love what you do. Oh, I, thanks for being here. Thank thanks, you very buddy. much. We'll be back. Let the smokehouse be your mountain getaway destination in beautiful Monteagle, Tennessee. Enjoy our cabins, restaurant, and old general store. Shop the smokehouse.com featuring homemade barbecue sauces, jellies, and many other fine Tennessee products. Our live Music on the Mountain series features some of the best local and Nashville talent every Friday and Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. No cover. Kids welcome. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is our segment that we call Police Pointers, and appropriately so. We have uh, the Tullamon Police Chief, Paul Blackwell, here uh, with us this morning. You may have guessed that because we kind of got on <laughs> uh, Paul and made him the subject of our opening uh, uh, <clears throat> segment there. And uh, we feel very privileged that we're actually able to do that and we're not being placed under arrest for some reason. So, oh, Paul, no. thank you very much. You said some very kind <laughs> things about... Uh, my wife. <laughs> that's right. You are so kind towards me. But well, very, that's right. That's very true. Very good things. Uh, and, and I don't have a desire to drive a Corvette. <laughs> I can buy, I, we, the city, can buy three police cars for the price of that one Corvette. So we would make sure that we take care of the officers first. Okay. All right. So if uh, you see the chief of police driving a Corvette, it's probably because... Someone Stan loaned it to Stan me. McMahon loaned it, <laughs> loaned to, it him. to me. Yeah, and then it, there'd be some question of whether you'd take that or not because of maybe conflict. A, a gift. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. Who knows? Yeah. But I won't I, be in a Corvette. So I guess that's not <laughs> that's not going to be happening anyway. Right. All right. Summertime is here. Just about. Summertime is here, and one of the topics I like to bring out because of the the nice weather is bicycle safety. Um. You know, when you ride a bike, and I'm going to tell you a true story. You know, it's uh, uh, well, I'll just start with the story. This past Saturday, I got up six o'clock in the morning, and I was going to go for a bike ride. Mm -hmm. uh, I figured traffic won't be bad six o'clock in the morning, uh, five minutes away from my house. I was on one of the not a major road, but but a larger neighborhood road. I was approaching a stop sign, and I saw a small pickup truck coming towards the stop sign. I'm watching him, he's slowing down, so I'm thinking everything's good. He gets to the stop sign and he's not stopping. He's just continuing to roll around the stop sign and at the same point, 
I was right there in front of it. Uh -huh. So I had to swerve to avoid him, uh, almost go off into the ditch and um, turn around and give him an evil look. <laughs> yeah. And then he, when he comes around, he gets fairly, not real close to me, but he rolls his window down, apologizes, and, you know, and I kind of explained to him that's why we have stop signs is so you stop to make sure no one's coming and yeah and again he apologized but uh, that's how quick something like that can sure. happen um, me as the bicyclist was doing everything right I had my headlight on flickering I had my tail light flickering tail light I had my helmet on I had uh, clothes that could easily be seen everything that I was doing was correct uh, but yet the other vehicle created almost a, you know, a, uh -huh. an injury accident. Right. And, uh, you know, and so it was all on the driver. And oftentimes people will get upset about the bicyclist and thinking, you know, what are they doing on the roads? Bicyclists, bicyclists have the exact same uh, privilege of being on the road as a motor vehicle does. So, you know, that's the first thing we like to tell people is, uh, bicycles have a right to be on the road. You you were mentioning the uh, the lights and such. Are those requirements for? They are signal? during during periods of dusk and darkness. Really? So you know, six o'clock in the morning, the sun was coming up. I really didn't need it, but I went ahead and turned it on anyway because you know anything that would bring a someone to pay attention. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, getting back to that, the the requirement was being met by myself, but the driver failed to do what he was required to do. Um, and when we talk about bicyclists, some of the things I just mentioned, and just as you asked, if it's dusk, you have to have a light on the front and the rear that can be seen from a distance. Mm -hmm. uh, the state law is anybody under 16 must wear a helmet, and, and of course always wear reflective clothing so that people can see, especially at night, when the headlights hit you, if there's some reflective material on your clothing, um, yeah, I, I bet that's big time important because I've, I've personally been in situations where you'd be right on somebody before you'd see them when mm -hmm. they're wearing dark clothing. Right. right, and if they don't have lights and everything, and and uh, you know, I'm not what you would call a hardcore bicyclist. Mm -hmm. I just like to get out and ride my bike, and mm -hmm. you know, you should be able to do that fairly safely. Sure. Uh, of course, the other requirement to the driver of a vehicle is any time you're passing a bicycle, you have to give them at least three feet of clearance. Mm -hmm. That's state law. That, right. that, can, that can get you cited if you fail to do that. Uh, and you're supposed to maintain that distance till you're safely beyond them. Um, Which might require you moving into the other lane, perhaps? Right. Yeah, and, okay. you know, you kind of get into that gray area of what if I cross a double yellow line, you know, I'm passing, you know. In something like that, I would hope a police officer uses common sense. Um, you know, so that's one of those case-by-case -case situations. Sure. Um, and and the same thing with motorcycles. Uh, motorcycles sometimes get that uh, fear of the other car because the car doesn't see them. Now, it may be obstructed but because you're in a blind spot or, mm -hmm. you know, you just don't see them because there's a bush over there. Uh, so drivers have to be very cautious that uh, you know, they're aware of the bicyclist and the motorcycles. And as this weather is getting nicer, we're going to see more and more of that. Um, so that's, that's kind of my spring, get ready for spring, be careful, watch out for the other people. And of course our walkers, we have a lot of people that walk. And uh, we don't have sidewalks in every location in the city. So there may be opportunities or times when people have to walk on the road to uh, to enjoy their afternoon walk or, or their morning walk. Is there any age where, where uh, there's a minimum age that you have to be to ride your bicycle on the road? Or that, uh, that you, uh, no, no? Th there's not. Of okay. course, as you get younger in age, we would hope there's parental, someone <laughs> there with them. Uh, but think about the kids that go to school, you know, and. Uh, some of them, in fact, I saw two this morning. They were going down the sidewalk as far as they could, but they reached a point where the sidewalk ended mm -hmm. and they had to get on the road. Of course, they weren't wearing helmets. <laughs> I could have stopped them and said, hey, where's your helmet? Right. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's, that's one of those things that parents need to make sure that their children are, are wearing helmets when they go out.
Now, you mentioned a moment ago the, about the helmet thing and that uh, there's a minimum age or you have to wear it if you're younger than what? Under, under 16. Under 16. So 16 and over do not have to wear one. You know, I've done a couple of stories on, uh, I think I did a story about your, your bicycle people that are actually mm -hmm. police officers and, and also one of the bike clubs here in town. And it appeared to me that when I was doing those stories, even though they were adults, they were all wearing helmets. And, and you'll find that, that most yeah. people that, that uh, are into cycling regularly will wear their helmets um, because it's that same thing. And, and they can tell you horror stories about cars running them off the road or having a wreck because they hit something in the road. And you know, even though that helmet may be a small plastic helmet, it's one more layer of coverage between you and the asphalt. I believe those helmets, though, were designed specifically to <clears throat> prevent some and, and serious to absorb, injury. Right, to absorb some of the impact. Because they, they do have the foam rubber in them and right. you know, give you a little bit of cushioning. OK. So uh, folks, you need to be careful out there. Be right? careful yeah, of the bicycles. Right. And uh, you know, this, this incident with me with this past Saturday, and ironically, the week before, I did my newspaper article on bicycle safety. So apparently this man didn't read that he didn't article. Read the, he didn't read the newspaper. Uh, so if he's watching, you know, uh, be careful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. And uh, you motorists need to be observant. Right. It's, a two, it's a, literally a yeah. two-way street. The bicyclists have their part they have to do, and the motor vehicle has their part that they have to do. And, uh, you know, if we both are cognizant of the other person, then hopefully our roadways will be safe. Okay. Off the subject a little bit, as we usually always do, uh, we've certainly seen in the news, one of the big stories in the news today is the uh, uh, police officer, and I forget where it was, in Oklahoma maybe? Mm -hmm. I, I Tulsa. Uh, which uh, uh, accidentally shot uh, someone he was chasing. Uh, because he grabbed his taser, uh, thought he was grabbing his taser and grabbed his gun. Uh, you, you said you guys in, here in Tullahoma have some means, uh, some prevention, some safety measures to prevent that from happening. Well, uh, yeah, and, and that's a tragic, tragic event sure. that occurred out there. Uh, and our, our police officers, our uniformed officers, do carry tasers. Um, but, but pretty much as a practice, we carry the taser on the opposite side of your firearm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just so that there isn't an opportunity to become confused with, you know, wh what are you grabbing? Um, so are you, are you, 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 I guess, as a police officer can understand if you're in a pressure or a tense situation uh, that you might grab that taser and pull the tr or the, your gun and pull the trigger before you had realized it wasn't your taser, right? In the, uh, the feel I, I, of it I wouldn't, is different. You know, I, I'd be very hesitant to even go down the road and try to discuss that. Yeah. Not okay. being there, not knowing what any circumstances sure. are. Uh, I've always found if I'm running, I can run better when nothing's in my hand. <laughs> yeah. You know, you pump. Right. Um, so it, it just. Yeah, you know, everything has to be taken on a case by case basis. Right, sure. But as far as the way we carry our taser, it is carried on the opposite side of your firearm. Yeah. And which makes a lot of sense. It does. Yeah. Uh, yeah for us. It yeah. makes sense for us. Right. Yeah. And uh you know, it's a very unfortunate situation. Um and, and we'll just have to see how that how that plays out out there. Do you as police chief notice these situations that you do that you see on T V and and, and in your mind, turn over. Well, you have to. I, yeah. every, every time you hear of an incident that occurs, you always have to do that. Uh, okay, are we doing something we locally that may contribute to the same type, mm -hmm. or, or how do we do something that would prevent that? Mm -hmm. so you you always do play the, you know the. I kind of tell like to tell people police work is like playing a sport. Maybe I like to play football because let's say you're the shortstop. And yeah. your coach is always telling you, think, if that ball comes to you, what are you going to do? Right. And that's how I kind of see police work. What if I'm in this situation, what am I going to do? Yeah. And the more you think about that, the more it becomes a reaction. Yes. And you know, that, that's always been my mindset and trying to tell new officers, as you're driving down the road, maybe listening to a little bit of music on the radio. You've got your police radio going. It's a beautiful day, the window's down. You're enjoying the breeze. Think, what if that car goes out in front of me? Or what if I get a call 
over at this bank? How am I going to respond to it? Right. Always think what, what if, and then how am I, the hypothesis. You know, Paul, that's a, that's a great analysis because I think in sports they teach you that uh, you, you, that's why you practice. So you go through those things mm -hmm. and it becomes uh, just a normal reaction, not, right. not something you have to necessarily mm -hmm. think and, about. And, think and about. police work is just like that. Yeah. You've got to think about putting yourself in a situation, how are you going to react? Uh, we've talked about domestic domestic right. violence before, and we've talked about how police officers respond to that. And when you think about it over and over again, you become comfortable in how do I respond? Where do I park my car? How do I approach the house? How do I walk with my partner? Mm -hmm. Do I walk right next to him or do we separate? Right. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that, that you you practice. So when you're in that situation, I don't want to say second nature, but you're pretty comfortable in that situation. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, maybe that's beating around the bush to get to your question, but, you know, we, we like to think about what we're doing sure. and what we would do if we're in a particular situation. And the more we think about it and practice it in our mind, it becomes a reaction for us. Right. Okay. All right, Paul. Very interesting. Thank, Thank you, you. As always. Thank you. All right, folks, we'll be right back in just a moment with more living right after this. Partners for Healing provides medical care to the working uninsured of Coffee, Franklin, and Moore counties. We are in Tullahoma from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursdays, and in Manchester on Fridays from 8 to 12. We provide primary medical care and offer an in-house disease management program. My name is Rosie Mitchell, and I would just like to say I am blessed to have partners in my life. Please call 455-5014 for more information. Thank you for being one of our Partners for Healing. Hello, this is Janie Price. When my husband Ray Price would tour across the country, his favorite place to dine was Cracker Barrel Old Country Store locations. His favorite thing to order was the Uncle Herschel. And the beauty of it all is forever, you'll be holding me too. I miss Ray dearly, and I'm so proud that his last album, Beauty Is, the final session, is available at his favorite restaurant. A love affair. The project includes a duet with Martina McBride and harmony vocals from Vince Gill. Ray believed this to be the best recording he had ever made. Oh, I wish I was 18 again. I think you'll agree when you pick up your copy of Beauty Is the Final Sessions at a Cracker Barrel Old Country Store location near you or at crackerbarrel.com. A world without breast cancer is a world with more birthdays. And signing up for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk will help us get there faster. The American Cancer Society invests in groundbreaking breast cancer research, and we're part of every community. In fact, one in two women newly diagnosed with breast cancer turns to us for support. Sign up today at makingstrideswalk.org. Together, we can finish the fight against breast cancer. Welcome back here. I'm Marilyn Ewing. It's always a pleasure to be here and to get very interesting guests here on Living. Of course, it's a struggle many, many people face all the time. And of course, that's uh, the struggle of stopping smoking. And of course, um, people face this on a daily basis. There is help out there. In fact, the American Lung Association, it's presenting freedom from smoking. This is coming up just around the corner. And it's all being made possible by CVS pharmacies. They have provided grant monies. And my very special guest today is Sherry Parsons, want to welcome you. Oh, thank you so much, Marilyn. Yes, yes, yes. It's great you're to like, be here. You're like the facilitator uh, right. on something coming up there in Shelbyville mm -hmm. as far as classes and this type of thing because you're actually in from Pulaski, I think. That's right, yeah. that's right. I so, drive over from Pulaski. Yeah. And we will be putting on the American Lung Association's Freedom from Smoking Clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, first clinic begins on April 21st, and we're just really excited to help people make a new start and stop yeah. smoking. Exactly. Now, where did all of this 
this generate from? Because as I mentioned, CBS providing the grant mm -hmm. money and that type of thing. So a lot of planning and that type of thing. Right, a lot of right. The clinic has been working since um, late winter on trying to get the grant from CBS. It's something that they do present to several communities. Mm -hmm. And they're just so excited because it's going to enable us to present the class completely free of charge for up to 32 participants. Wow. And we're just, we're really excited about exactly. it. Exactly. Now, I understand that you guys must be awfully special because uh, some did not get grants. Some did not receive. So right. you must be doing a lot of things right. Well, I, we like to we like to hope so anyway. Uh, I think what we were able to provide is that we had, we were able to open it up to the whole community. It's not just for clinic patients. Right. Uh, but we do have an existing base of patients that, that I think they thought could really benefit from this. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people with chronic health disorders. As we know, smoking is linked to one out of five deaths in the United States, yeah. and that's a big deal. You know, we want to we want to help people break that chain. Absolutely. Talk about the classes. How will these be constructed? Well, there are eight sessions in the classes. Um, they are presented. They go for about an hour and a half, and the first three sessions are based on understanding readiness to quit, mm -hmm. identifying triggers and factors that are going to make it difficult to break that addiction. Yes. And then during the fourth week, there's actually a built-in quit day. Okay. We have a little quit day ceremony. Mm -hmm. Then the remainder of the classes are based around understanding how to maintain that smoke-free yeah. lifestyle, yeah. keep that healthy change yeah. going. Yeah. So. Are they really effective? How is there a percentage on? Okay, um, this will really work. This sure, doesn't. there are some percentages yeah. and some numbers, and we could talk about those in more detail. But basically, most people are going to try to quit about seven times. Mm -hmm. It's going to take about seven mm -hmm. attempts before they're successful. So what we like to think of is that participants that go through the class, maybe 25% of them will be smoke-free in a year. But hopefully, of the other percentage, mm -hmm. this is going to be one of their seven attempts, mm -hmm. and they're going to learn more about the addictive cycle, they're going to learn more about making behavior changes, mm -hmm. and they're going to make that positive change one day. Oh yeah, very good. So. Now, you being the facilitator, you're actually the instructor. Right, and, right. And, and your qualifications on that, I think that you had to be a former smoker, I think that Well, was we didn't, we don't have to be a former smoker. I am a former smoker. I smoked for over 15 years. Um, it does help, I think, to understand the cycle and understand the challenges involved. And then I also, I'm a, I'm a CNA. Mm -hmm. um, I don't practice as a CNA, but I do have that qualification. Mm -hmm. And I think the other major qualification is that I was willing to jump in and try and do it. So <laughs> I think that was maybe one of my exactly my qualifications they like. Yes, yes. Now you're working very closely with the Shelbyville Community Clinic. That's right. Yeah, and that's where actually the classes will be held. They'll be held in the same building as the mm -hmm. clinic. Um, it's the business complex, and I'm not sure exactly what the classroom number is, okay. but they will have that information at the clinic. Exactly. Sure. So you're going to be facilitating 32, but that's going to be divided into those two classes. Right. Two different sessions yeah. of clinic, 16 mm -hmm. participants per class. Mm -hmm. uh, it's open to anyone at all in the community who has a sincere desire to quit smoking. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to be a clinic patient. We just want you to, to show up and do your best. Right. Exactly. Let's talk about uh, funding and such. How much does it cost? Well, it's completely free, actually. The grant from CVS, which is extremely generous, is going to enable us to give these classes with no charge at all. You get a workbook, you get a CD with a lot of materials, mm -hmm. you get ongoing support from the American Lung Association. It's a great deal. Oh, man. Absolutely. Yeah. It sounds like. And, of course, the clinic there is um, wonderful. They have a mm -hmm. wonderful group of people. I think that you actually volunteer there as well. Sure, I do when I can. They, uh, the clinic does a Women's Day quarterly and I really enjoy helping out with that when I can. Uh, sometimes I do some behind the scenes stuff, really glamorous work like filing, dusting, <laughs> reshelving, that kind of thing. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. And the clinic does such great work. It's such a resource for the community, for yes. uninsured adults, so mm -hmm. I really enjoy being able to help out. Exactly. Are the classes full at this time, or you still have room? We do have room. We have some spots still available for our April 21st class, mm -hmm. and then there is another session coming up on May 30th yeah. and that one I believe is completely open wow. so yeah. we're hoping to pack them in and get them get them on a new healthy lifestyle absolutely is there a phone number that uh, you may can throw out there yes it would be 931 684 
6772. Yes. The clinic is open in the evenings, so if it's not, if, if you don't get an answer, just leave yeah. a message and we will get your name down and get right back with you. Wow, it's going to be a great thing. I it is going to be a great a thing. Wonderful thing. And so uh, it sounds like there's uh, some support out there. People are mm -hmm. really eager to get in there and uh, to, to do their best. To right, to right. And that's, and that's what it's about. It's about putting in the effort and, and knowing that you want to make a change, you're ready to make a change, you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to have everything exactly lined up. There's no right time. Just, yeah. you know, just dive in Jump and do in it. There. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Again, this is all with the American Lung Association. Freedom from smoking. Freedom from smoking. Yeah, and thank goodness CVS along the way providing the grant mm -hmm. and that type of thing. So hats off to all of you guys for doing wonders there in the community. Thanks so much. We're looking really forward to seeing how it works out. Absolutely. Sherry Parsons has been our guest on this particular segment. Again, 931-684-6772 is the number to call if you want to jump in those classes, which are just around the corner. So uh, get more information about that uh, by calling Sherry and some of the folks there at the uh, Community Clinic of Shelbyville. That's another segment of Living. Stay with us. We'll return with more right after this. At the time, maybe you were just building a bridge, a business, or a community. Maybe you were simply working for a home or a better tomorrow. At the time, you served out of duty and love of country. But in that time, we see a legacy created, an American dream lived. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. There is no place like home. Getting home safely is just a click away. And choosing the right seat for your little one's age and size will take you down the road to safer travels. How can I ever thank you enough? Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. I'm meteorologist Leland Statham from the News Channel 5 Weather Center. Look to Jim Fuller and crew for local news night here on Channel 6. All right, folks, we're back, and you know, one of the things that's really cool about doing what we do here is you never know who you're going to run into, and my friend Charlie Allen called me last week, and he said, I've got somebody I want to bring to your television show. You're going to enjoy him, and you're going to enjoy him as well, folks. I'd like to introduce to you right now Nick Tokeman, and Nick is uh, one of the people, if you have seen the show on its own discovery. Yeah. The deadliest catch, Nick is either Sunshine or Moonbeam. Uh, <laughs> I can't yeah. figure out which uh, one it is. Sunshine. I sunshine. Guess, yeah. And yeah. Nick is is with us today. Coming, you're coming through from where? From Maine, Massachusetts. Massachusetts, and headed where? Uh, I was here in Tennessee, just visiting Charlie. Visiting Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you on here. I know a lot of people out there watch that show because I've heard them talk about it. I've seen it a couple of times. Uh, how in the world, you're 26 years old, mm -hmm. college graduate, yeah. how did you get from going to school on a vessel in Alaska yeah. hunting and catching crabs? Yeah. Uh, I, was, uh, I was like 20 years old and uh, I wasn't really happy in college kind of thing. I was, wasn't doing what I wanted to do and I was at my grandparents' place. And they, my grandfather introduced me to a show on TV. Well, it was Deadliest Catch, and yeah. it just looked like fun, and I wanted to try it. So um, I just went up there and did it. And, yeah. Okay, now how? So where where were you going to college at the time? Uh, Concordia, that uh, Concordia University, that's in Montreal. Montreal. So you're a Canadian? No, I'm an American. An American. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so. How does a guy just decide he's going to do that? How do you walk uh, you walk out on a dock somewhere and tell one of the captains? I think you said they're involved in the show. There's what six boats? Uh, six boats um, on the actual uh, on the actual show. Right, yeah. right. But during crab season, how many boats are there floating around out there catching crab? For crab, I don't, for Apelio crab, there's roughly around like 70 boats in the fleet that are still catching crab. Catching crab. So yeah. how does a guy just walk up out of nowhere yeah. because you want to do this and end up being on a television show? 
Uh, well, actually, I, I went up in Kodiak, Alaska, and um, at first I, I got this um, list of like boats, and I was making phone calls. You know, when I was back in college, and nobody would want to hire me because first is if if I got fired and they hired me from you know where I was like back in Massachusetts they would have to buy my plane ticket and return me back to Massachusetts. So they wouldn't want to take that risk and they don't know who they're dealing with, if I'm a criminal or anything. They right. actually would want to see you. So I actually just flew up to, um, to Kodiak and I just showed up and I started walking the docks. And, um, and But with I, no skills. No, no. You had no boating skills, no, no crab catching skills. Nothing, nothing. How'd you talk your way into this deal? I just said uh, I, I'm a hard worker. I'm, I'm willing to listen, willing to learn, and and that's it. Just give me a chance, and that's all I said, and and it kind of went from there. And uh, you know, I mean, the first some of the boats, like I was walking, like I mean, I, I was literally walking the docks like three weeks before here, in my first yes to a job. And uh, the first guy, uh, the first boat I got on, um, I quickly left because the guy he put water in the fuel tank and fuel in the water tank, and like the boat stalled in the middle of the harbor, but. When you're first starting out, you don't know which boats are good or not, and okay. so you get the you get the junk boats, and then finally you work from there, and you see like which boats are the good boats, and you start kind of getting on those boats. Okay, so the boat you're on on the show, what's the name of that boat? Uh, actually, this year um, I'm on another boat, but I was formerly on the Northwestern and also on the Time Bandit. Northwestern and Time Bandit, and what what's the you know the deadliest catch and as I was talking to you earlier that's not because you're catching a crab that's big enough to bite somebody's head off no. it's it's about the conditions of going out there and bringing your catch in how many days do you, when you go out there's there's how many days you spend out uh, it could depend it can vary I mean it could be you know it depends on how quick you catch your quota I mean it could I mean or, or, you know your catch that time it could be three days or it could be as much as 17 days as it depending on how fast you can load the boat honestly and and what's a boat load Northwestern was a little over 200,000 pounds of crab 200,000 pounds of crab <laughs> yeah that's a bunch of crab legs, isn't it? Uh, my first season, uh, we had to do 1.8 million pounds um, that we, were, we had to catch. It was a five month long season, but uh, that was because of the ice and everything. So it took a lot longer. We had like a 14 day break because we couldn't fish because the ice was down, you know, and so we had to wait for it to go back up north. And, and so as I was, uh, I think, do we have some video? Yes. You told it, me. It's ready. Mm -hmm. All right, here's some video of, of, uh, of the show. That was, uh, <laughs> they were just initiating me on the time band. Oh, they're initiating you yeah. there. Uh, you're inside that? I'm inside the <laughs> net, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, they're a good bunch of guys, but they were just kind of pranking me. They told me I was supposed to spray paint the boat, and they kind of, that was my initiation. Is that your captain, or is that? Yeah, yeah. He's a good, what's his name? That's uh, John Hillstrain, and then my former one was Sig Hansen. Uh, both good guys. Now, I noticed, I noticed as, I, as I read the names of the, the crew, a lot of them are family. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it's like family run and everything. I mean, you're, you're either like born into it or, you know, you're just up in Alaska and, you know, you can't. All right, so, and, and as we were discussing earlier, I was asking Nick, I said, all right, now, uh, do you make your living as a actor or do you make your living as a fisherman? Fisherman. Yeah. I do, we do, I do crab in the fall and winter and um, in the summer I go up to Bristol Bay and I do uh, salmon, salmon fishing. Salmon fishing in the summer. Yeah. So, so who makes the money off of Deadliest Catch? Uh, actually, I don't know if I'm able to answer that really. Uh, okay, I, I, well, yeah. but somebody's making some money. Yeah. The boat captain's probably making some money and mm -hmm. the boat makes some money. Mm -hmm. And they're paying you to, to fish, yeah. and you're so there's really not a, a you're not getting equity actors pay for being a fisherman on that show. Um, I don't think I probably could, not. I, I I don't think I could answer that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, it's interesting. It's fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you're 26 years old. Uh, I asked him earlier, do you have any any uh, love interest yet? Uh, no, not not at the moment. Not at the moment, girls. <laughs> not at the moment. Yeah. You know, 
I, I'm really proud of you because you're out doing stuff. I mean, when you settle in, and you, you might be settling into your life. Mm. Do you really do you enjoy doing this? Is this, or is it something that you just you just thought I want to try this, and you forced yourself to do it? Or have you found joy in it now, though? Um, well, when I was doing, I, I absolutely um, I loved it. Like you know, it just it gave me a thrill. Um, it, I mean, I, if I had to do it all over again, I'd do the same thing. It was just, it was a lot of fun, and um, I think it was like the challenge and everything like that. You know, like staying up long hours and just like pushing yourself, you know, beyond limits and stuff. But um, I, I uh, now it's starting to feel more like a, like a job a little bit. But uh, I still I still enjoy doing it. Um, but really, um, I actually uh, on the side I, I enjoy doing public speaking and like talking to kids and stuff like that. All right. So, do you think do you think you'll continue on into your life a little bit further the fishing aspect of of, of your life? I think so. I um, I have a, a mate sixteen hundred ton um, license, so that kind of branches me out further, like in the maritime industry. So I might I might use that, but uh, we'll see. Mate sixteen hundred ton. Yep. So that allows you to go onto different vessels of different sizes, and you're capable of doing a specific job on paper um i mean it's it's <laughs> yeah but i mean like i mean to actually have the experience i mean it's a lot more to it and yeah i'm I mean, sure yeah I, I just got the credential for it but I, I mean really it's you know i mean i i would they would need i need to i would need to know more to learn how to drive a boat actually and right right but but it's like going through a guild or going going yeah. through a uh, not as a union right. class or something. I mean, you get your certification. That's how a lot of people learn to do what they do is, mm. is through experience mm. in, in that way. Now, how picky are you eating seafood when you go out in Tennessee or Atlanta, Georgia, or Chicago yeah. to order a salmon? Uh, well, actually, I probably wouldn't order a salmon from over there. Uh, I, 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 where I go in Bristol Bay, uh, we have like wild caught salmon, and it's really good. I mean, you know, you have like you know wild salmon and a farm salmon. It's night and day difference. Right, right? I'm sure. You know, they're out there fighting for their lives. You know, you know, like salmon sharks chasing them. They're just swimming away and everything, and you know, like. In, you know, in a farmed environment, they're just sitting there, just you know, kind yeah, of floating and like mud cat. Yeah, just getting feed junk food and all yeah. that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, salmon eating junk food. I <laughs> yeah, love right. that. I love that. But, uh, but yeah, no, I like. Uh, I love. I love oysters and I love lobster and I do love. But seafood. but it's hard. It's hard. I've lived uh, on the ocean before for a while, and it's hard once you get used to eating yeah. something that comes right out of it that yeah. day. Yeah. It's hard to go inland and eat a piece of flounder or a piece of salmon yeah. and, and realize how good it tastes mm. out of the wild yeah. uh, versus that. So uh, when do you go back? When do you start fishing again? I'm actually going back up uh, June 6th uh, to go salmon fishing. Um, uh, I go with a guy, uh, Nick Mavar, and uh, he's he's been on the Northwestern too. And, I go with him every every summer, and uh, it's been good. He's he's really he really goes out there and gets it, and it's a lot of fun. It's just fast-paced fishery, go go go. So so, what do you eat when you're on the boat? I mean, if you're staying out, you're out yeah. ten days on the boat. What right. what type of vittles do you have there? Um, well, actually, we eat really well. I mean, we all have chicken, we we'll have steaks and stuff, and we, we. Do you have a cook? Is there a cook that goes along, or do y'all all sort of do it together? We rotate. Like, you know, one day you'll do it, and then another day someone else will do it. And so who's the best cook on the boat? Um, I think, actually, Nick's a pretty good cook, but, yeah. <laughs> it, Are there some cooks that aren't so good? You're going, um, ah, I wish it was Nick's day. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. When I was on the Northwestern, Matt Bradley, he was he was cooking every day, and he's, like, an amazing cook. Yeah. I mean, he, he could whip up. A meal in no time, but yeah, yeah. the only thing is, is, it's like he makes a mess, mess in the kitchen, and you have to clean up. After oh, you have to clean up after the cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. but but no, he's a great I cook. But, yeah. I understand. Well, you know, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, it's just exciting to have someone off of a off of a television show that's yep. on big TV <laughs> to come and visit with us, and know that you're always welcome. Thank you, and we'd love to have you come back when you can. Uh, and tell people, you know, it's on Discovery Channel. Yeah. 
and just go on Discovery Channel and look for the deadliest catch. Yep. Oh, and I want to ask one more question before sure. I leave. You, know, you see a lot of these shows. Are those captains really as mean when they're not on television <laughs> as they are when they're on television? Uh, actually, if, if you do what you're told and you just listen, I, I haven't really had a problem. You don't have a problem. No, I mean, like, if, if you're going to not listen or whatever, sure, they're going to be as mean as hell, but they just want to whip you into shape. And the guys that I've worked for, they, you know, I've just done my best, and they've always been really nice to me. Yeah, well, I've sort of figured that maybe some of it might be, some of it is kind of staged a little bit to make the television show more exciting. You know, actually, um, I don't think anything would be staged so much. It's just like, the thing is about the show is like, you know, we film like constantly, and you know, I mean, they're all they're cutting like you know, like, like I don't know how many constant hours of film. Yeah. yeah, and they're supposed to make like what, like five minutes of your of your boat like each episode. Right, so it's right. like maybe like maybe an hour or two right. hours tops of your boat there. So they're just gonna. It's all laying just, on the floor down yeah, there when they exactly. get through with. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nick, thanks, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Come back and see us. Yeah. Folks, we'll be right back after these messages. Yeah. We get closer to a world with more birthdays when we take cancer patients by the hand. We help them find answers and guidance and hope and give them more candles to light. We're the American Cancer Society. Help create a world with more birthdays at morebirthdays.com. Serving you as a local firefighter. Proudly served our country in the United States Air Force. Serving Tullahoma. Helping our kids. Hi, I'm Terry Stroop. Your comfort is our service. We'd like to thank Tullahoma for the privilege of serving your heating and cooling needs. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. Our producer, Philip Scoggins, went up to Mont Eagle this weekend to the Trails and Trilliums and brings us this video report. This is our 12th year um, benefiting friends of the South Cumberland here at the Mont Eagle Sunday School Assembly. Ours is a three-day festival celebrating everything that's wonderful about nature. We've got hikes, art, um, programs, children's activities, just fun for everyone, incorporating nature into their lives. So this morning we opened registration. Uh, we have hikes le um, from all over the plateau um, that have left this morning. We have vendors here, arts and crafts, an arts exhibit, and um, later this evening we'll be having a wine and wildflower reception with our keynote speaker, Rich Louvre, who is the author of Last Child in the Woods. This is the 10th anniversary of Last Child in the Woods, and um, Mr. Louvre has joined us to help talk about nature deficit disorder and the importance of involving children in the outdoors. Friends of the South Cumberland um, is a group that uh, supports all of the state park natural areas that are here on the plateau. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. Um, we are glad to have an opportunity to share the wonderful message about the work that Friends does about the beauty of the plateau and hope that you'll be able to join us next year. Um, for information about Trails and Trilliums, you can find us at www.trailsandtrilliums.org.
strap the brown rope, okay? Good job. Good job. Just a little bit more. It's a silly house and they walk through the door and then they can come up here and they can walk through here. And in the back, there's a little garden. With the door, so they can walk. He's a little red like See? A very bony back, right? Now try feeling the side, it's really squishy. want to spend time out on the trail. Are you tired of getting those letters in the mail being turned down for that new car due to bankruptcy, medical expenses, or divorce? Then look no further than Russell Barnett Kia. Good credit, bad credit, no problem. Here at Russell Barnett Kia, we are your bank. Dial 931-455-6066 or visit us on the web at russellbarnett.com. And remember, we are the bank and we can help you. Good credit, bad credit, no problem. Why buy anywhere else? It's your trademark. That's something special everyone knows and remembers. It's your thing. It's made holidays special for decades. And summer's unforgettable for the entire neighborhood. It's made everyone laugh every single time. Don't let illness or injury keep you from doing your thing. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. here on Living. It's just a, a great day today. Just all kinds of things going on. A couple of very wonderful guests out of the Shelbyville, Bedford County area. It's all in helping the youth. To my extreme left, it is Pete Patel, of course, Integrity um, Visitation and Family Services. And want to welcome you. Also, Thank Terrell you. Johnson is with us from Voice and Vision. Of course, it's getting a lot of publicity and such. Uh, and the Rap Center there in Shelbyville as well. So want to welcome both of you guys to Living this morning. As I mentioned, all of this is kind of filtered to help the youth in that area. So you guys work together. Uh, you're looking for more help. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But you, Terrell, you actually continuously have things for the entire family. Yes, ma'am. And such there at the Rat Center. Let's talk about that because there is a big event coming up this weekend. Um, well, in general, we, we do promote basically for anyone. There's no filter. Uh, no age group yep. and no no race discrimination. Yep. We want everybody to come together. Right. Uh, the event for this weekend, we've invited Color Craft Studios to come in and take portraits, mm -hmm. family portraits for everyone, because we know uh, that's kind of a an art that's got away. Sure. Uh, as yeah. families have broken up, no one really takes family pictures anymore. So that right. it it preserves the family history. Sure. Um, 
We'll have food, uh, free food, yeah. and art activities, also karaoke. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll introduce the idea of our community garden, yeah. which everyone can come and help with the community garden. And that means they can participate yeah. in helping it grow, yeah. but they can also take the vegetables home and be able to cook with them mm -hmm. because we use heirlooms, um, all natural, no pesticides. So the, the food is a lot healthier also for the community. We want to promote everything healthy um, and everything family oriented. Oh, very good. So that's two in one. Let's rewind just a bit and talk about Voice and Vision and kind of where that started. What, what does it mean exactly? Uh, well, Voice and Vision actually started uh, I had an idea to form an art group yeah. of different artists, all different fields, from drawing to music to dance. Yeah. And Julius had the same exact idea, and we didn't know each other. <laughs> One day, we both were booked for a show, and we met up. And he does poetry, he's mm -hmm. a spoken word artist, mm -hmm. and I'm a visual artist. Yeah. I paint and do portraits. And Julius had a spoken word already prepared and I had a painting prepared sure and it just so happened that they both went along together yeah. so instead of performing separately we formed the voice and vision right there on the spot wow. at the show so yeah. he did his spoken word piece <laughs> and I did a painting to interpret what he just said yeah and that's how voice and vision was started wow. over a year ago. exactly and it's just really blossomed and yes. grown tremendously I want to talk about the rap center as well because it's not what it sounds to be R-A-P but what right. does it stand for uh, rap does not stand for rap music right rap stands for rural arts program right and as we all know art is very broad so art goes from drawing to dance, to music, um, to even the way you cut your grass. Yes. It can be uh, hair designs or clothing designs, anything art related yes. is what we want to promote. Absolutely. Anything creative. Sure, so absolutely. That's that's the whole basis of the art center, I mean the rap center, mm -hmm. excuse me, mm -hmm. um, to promote the art. Sure, sure. And of course, Pete, you bring a lot to the table, I'm mm -hmm. sure, because integrity, you know, the, it, your name stands for what it, it is, <laughs> because uh, visitation, the family services and such, and working with the youth and the adult side of things, the parents as well. So bringing all of this together. Yeah, but that's, that's basically, uh, you know, last time I was here, I, I was pleading to other, other organizations to reach out to us mm -hmm. so that we could work together in helping the community. And that's exactly what Julius and Terrell did at, yeah. at The Voice and Vision, is they reached out to us. And so we, we came up with a plan to help the community, you know, uh, as, yeah. as many facets as we can. Sure. They, they pull in the kids with the arts, yeah. and mm -hmm. they, get, they keep them off the streets yeah. and keep them out of trouble. And then we want to educate the parents. We want to yeah. educate the parents on yeah. all of the parenting yes. techniques and you know our qualified uh, teachers can can help them with that and it's not saying that you know you have trouble at home or that you know you're, you're you're having it's just ha helping you connect with your kids in a better way right. and uh, that's basically how you know we want to we want to work together sure and we you know we yeah. want to invite other organizations as well there you know, you we go. want we want them to come out and yeah. contribute in as many ways as possible you know the more minds that come together the better ideas we'll have and the better yeah. results we'll get sure so. already you're working with various churches in Shelbyville and Beverly County I understand yes. so that's a wonderful thing yes ma'am yeah uh, pastor Jason from Believers Faith Fellowship yeah. is me and Julius's mentor he's really helped us out a long way and he's also a board member yeah um, but more than anything he's a he's a great friend sure. and the church family is more than willing to help us out yeah and not not just uh, believers faith but there's been several several, several churches that yeah. have come to lend a hand yeah and we can do we'll do whatever we can to mm -hmm. uh, accommodate them as well absolutely talk about some of the things we can see in the summer of course we're coming up on the summer months and the kids are kind of scattered and maybe a little bored so we got to keep them busy so what's on the plate for maybe the upcoming few months uh, with, well within the next couple of months we have some grand ideas uh, and I'm sure we can make all of them work yep. as long as the community does come together yep. mm -hmm. uh, one of our biggest plans is to do a Saturday morning breakfast every Saturday morning mm -hmm for absolutely free we're going to feed the kids um, at the center a sausage biscuit or you know something yeah. general but basically yeah. we're going to get the kids up sure and moving during the yeah. daytime yeah yeah and uh just keep them to where they're not playing video games or bored in the house mm -hmm. uh, from there we'll go to our art classes mm -hmm. and the art classes will be something creative mm -hmm. of course to get their minds working after yeah. they've got their bellies full yeah and then we'll let them run it off with right. some activities either inside the gym or outside You're right but um 
basically we, we just want the kids to have fun and be off the streets yes. and have something to do during the summer. Sure, sure. Another, sure. another activity they have over there is a studio. They're building a studio uh, there and Julius will be running the music program there. Mm -hmm. And what they, they're not just going to you know come in and record, but you can learn sound engineering, you can oh, learn yeah. audio production. Oh, that's fun stuff. And those are all classes that, you know, yeah. that we want to help the kids learn. So, sure, yeah. sure. Now you're also, you're looking for volunteers. You're looking for individuals mm -hmm. to come in to help with those kids. You're looking for churches, you're looking for other organizations and such. There has to be phone numbers and such that uh, those individuals maybe can reach out to you guys. Yes, ma'am. Um, there's a website that you can go on. It's the rapcenter.org and also voiceandvision.com. Mm -hmm. Or you can call Julius or myself. Uh, yeah. Would you like me to give those? Sure. Uh, my number is 941-840-840. 8038 if yeah. anyone would like to contact me right. also Facebook or Instagram yeah. we're not really that hard to find yeah um, so if you guys want to volunteer please feel free to contact us someone knows our name somebody can get you the number mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right oh well, you know, my organization's website is integrityvfs.com, yes. and you can contact me at 931-607-1656. Uh, some of the services you might be interested in are the parenting classes, single, term, single parenting classes. Yes. We're also doing a therapeutic uh, community service, so if you have community service hours to work off, you know, you can come sign up with us, and sure. we'll, we'll, we'll get you set up with some stuff to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, very good, very yeah. good. <laughs> Got to reiterate the fact that this weekend, uh, all of this starts at 9 o'clock. Uh, what time this weekend for your big family yeah. day? Yeah, 10 o'clock on 10 Saturday. Okay. Um, you know, it's, uh, and our, the flyers will be up on our Facebook page yeah. and our websites, and so you'll find the information all you need there. Uh, some of the volunteers you were talking about, volunteers we need, we wanted mm -hmm. to start up a tutoring, tutoring program there sure. for after school tutoring yeah. or even summer class tutoring. Mm -hmm. So if anybody you know, has the credentials and wants the willingness to do that to connect with the community, they can reach out to us and we'll get you set up at our facility. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Just working hand in hand yes, for the betterment of our youth and yes. the communities and such. So keep going forward and continue to join others and join forces with everyone you can to, to touch our kids, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. It has been Pete Patel, of course, uh, Integrity, Visitation and Family Services, and Tyrell Johnson, of course, Voice and Vision, the Rat Center there in Shelbyville and Bedford County. Thank you so much for watching Living. Back with more right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the paint. Uh-oh, I just knocked out a tree over. This is the paint doctor. I got the color wheel. Now, you know what a color wheel is? It is the wheel that the paint works where you pick all your colors to paint your room. It could be a multicolored beard. It could be a underarm fan. You never can tell. One thing we do know is that it's time to paint. You know, you can make your wife very happy if you go to your house and paint some rooms or you paint you paint the outside of the house, the inside of the house. It makes them very, feel very good because you work hard for them and they like that. All women like to see their man sweat. You know, they do, they do. Honeydew is what they do. And you get to do it too. So you go to the paint works at 1960 North Washington Street and you see David, David Eichenen over there. And he's the real paint doctor. He fix you up with color. It's so nice when the color is right. Go to Paintworks today, Martin Senor. See, Martin C. Nor, right there. Martin Senor at, at the Paintworks. Bye, and we see you next time. Ha, ah, I'm burning up. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. This past weekend, the Scottish Society of this region presented Piping on the Green at Celtic Cup, and we have a video clip for you. It was fun, and I hope they do it again next year. I think they will. Never looks so good. A sipping life, I like it.
wish I could But these sober tears are all that's left to shed Thank you soul, now I'm made of lead Face down beneath the rubble lies a man Cause of a future already in the past But of himself he hasn't much to say But wake the gods, his judgment day He said I left my home where the dead never rose Where the streets of gold I've yet to find And at the end of the day all you can do is pray without hope you yeah, might as well be blind, yeah, be blind. Tomorrow comes a day too soon. Tomorrow comes a day too soon. Angel, sweet angel of my youth, where have you gone? You flew away too soon. This brick I built now builds a higher wall. See it crumble. Hear me fall, there hangs a fool, no one's had it all. He said I left my home, where the dead never rose, where the streets of gold I've yet to find. And at the end of the day, all you can do is pray, for the hope you might as well be blind, yeah be blind. Tomorrow comes a day too soon. Hundred years have passed me by And the blood from the river flows To the crimson fears never sown No, never sown They said I left my home Where the dead never rose Where the streets of gold I've yet to find And at the end of the day All you can do is pray For the hope you might as well be Blind, yeah, be blind. Tomorrow comes to day too soon. 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 Are you? You've never looked so good. I forgot it. Her nurse. Need a claim number? Her personal assistant. Let me just grab a her housekeeper. Her cook. Her accountant. When I started taking care of mom, I didn't realize the challenge of playing so many roles. But above all, I'm still her daughter. Visit AARP.org slash caregiving to connect with experts and other caregivers. Together we can better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Hey, we're the geezers are back. Yeah, the geezers are back. <laughs> Did she really call us? She call called us geezers. geezers. Oh that's okra, okra leg over there. You're yeah. somebody to call. Yeah. yeah, that's right. We are glad, by the way, to have Julia back with us. Oh, tonight. I she's, know. She's had Good some surgery. Yay, Julia. She always yeah. makes us smile. That's right. She that's does. Right. And you know that the, the, with the weather getting warmer and people getting out and moving around and working in their yards and playing sports and running, I want you to remember Aquahydrate right here. Oh my here. gosh, yes, that stuff and is. And that great. is that is our water sponsor right there here on uh, Channel Six. It's brought to us by Mid South Distributing, Rick Gerwe and the girls over there, and all the family at Mid South Distributing. It is electrolyte infused. So don't let your electrolytes get low, you know, 
Aqua Hydrate. Let me tell you what. There's not I, many bottled waters that have that. No, no, and they have different sizes, and it's a very, it's a very substantial bottle too. So mm -hmm. it's not one of those little old things that it's going to get a hole poked in it. I mean, this is real stuff, and uh, I was without some for a couple of days, and there is a huge difference in the water in that water right there and any other water you drink around. It's very, very big difference yeah, in it and water. how it makes you feel and the taste of it. And we just want you to make sure you go out and get some aqua hydrate. When you're going to hydrate, Absolutely. aqua hydrate. Exactly. That's right. And they've got some other great products. I won't mention them. And if you're an adult, they've got some other Plenty. Stuff, and they've got plenty of that. <laughs> plenty. <laughs> they, uh, as a matter of fact, they uh, are the distributors for Old Shed, which is our local, oh, that's right. Absolutely. Which is our local uh, brewery here. Yes. Which uh, brews oh, beer right. in, yeah. in, in mm -hmm. here and uh, they, they uh, great off. great cottage industry right here in Tullahoma. Right, absolutely. Which we all need to support. What's right here? Everything right. local. Yeah. Well, Everything in this local. region. Yes, that's, that's know, right. In this region, folks, that's don't right. forget to file your income tax. So oh my gosh, I've already on, done you're it. You're watching this on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday's the day. I've already Wednesday's done it. Wednesday's the day. I need to call <laughs> Pam this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a piece on the news about filing an extension. An so extension. You, it's today is extension day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Have a great weekend. All right, All please right. do. Folks, we'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. Bye-bye.